There's a lot of awesome guitar manufacturers out there today. Nags Guitars out of Maryland does some really cool work with binding a little bit further in on a body where then you see the natural wood and you can get a stain top. So you get the best of both worlds without having to do all the taping and mess that Paul Reed Smith does. Slightly easier in some ways, a little bit less error prone. So this is a tribute guitar. I'm going to show you how to do this in a two-part series. I've got some binding that's 1.6 millimeter thick. I bought it years ago and by chance I was digging through my router bits and I had that same size. So we'll go on to easel the application for running the CNC. I'll edit a tally top, cut this out, glue it, route it, put the binding in, and then part two I'll show you how I did the stain, taping off. This one's almost done. I gotta put one more coat of true oil. This is a torrified basswood back. I did a review of uh, torrified woods maybe about a year ago, and I thought this would look awesome with the blue, the binding, the natural quilted maple, and then the torrified basswood. Really cool project, almost done here, but time to post the video. So we'll do some voiceover work and show you how I got this one done. The Easel CNC program is for running the Inventable CNC. I've got a tele cut out here. What I did is I drew a line and then went into that line and edited the different points to get it to look like this shape. So you can grab the different points and make different curves. So I got that curve in the shape of that shark fin and then left the upper bout exposed. And you can see in here, it's pretty easy to use, just some back and forth learning it. And then you click carve, set up some basic home points and you're off. I tried to get a little bit artistic here with the camera angles. This is at four times speed. One of the issues I have with the Inventable CNC is it's not all that fast. So the first carve is for what I'm calling the shark fin. It made a bunch of passes. And the second carve is the actual body. And I drew this out on my template and tried to get it all lined up. One of the things with this machine is I'm not comfortable running a book match top. So that's why I had this one piece quilted maple top. This ran for about 45 minutes and then it was done. And I'll show you the in video here as I pop it off. All right, let's test this out. That is perfect. Just a slight lip, I can sand that out. I'll start it here and here. This is pretty in line with my original drawing, so. Once I pop this off, you can see I had nine pieces of tape on the back side holding this down. I had to prop up that piece of wood. You see those nine pieces of tape holding it down. Just pull those off. And there was a little bit of fuzz left from the CNC bit, from the router bit. So I've got a razor blade and we're just cleaning out that channel. So I didn't route all the way down into the top. This was about a quarter inch top and I routed down maybe about an eighth. So I still got a little bit of a room in here in terms of sanding. We'll scrape that fuzz off. And when I go to do the coloring, definitely should have taken this to the drum sander to get that fuzz off versus just scraping with the razor blade. So here I'm making sure I've got everything clean. Nothing 
still jammed in there. We'll plop on template. I think most of my guitars now I'm moving forward, especially Tele's. I'll put a humbucker in the neck and a single coil on the bridge. Love that sound. I also flipped this over and rear routed the back so I could see the nice quilted maple. So I've got a bearing bit in here, clean it out, swap out different routers, different bits. That's how I get my process to move a little bit faster. Do a 5 a snack pocket, about an inch for each pickup. Make my adjustments, make sure I don't burn my template, which I've made a ton of those mistakes in the past. We'll pop the template off, route down to the right depth. So we'll fit the binding in next. This binding's about 20, 25 years old. I've had it for at least 10. It hasn't broken up or cracked or anything like that. It's actually in pretty decent shape. I've got enough of this binding to do a couple guitars. And I'm pretty sure I could find it online again if I needed to. So we'll get it fit. Roll it in, tap it in. Cut off the top. Needed a little bit harder of a roller to make sure it's down. I really didn't want this to move once I started gluing and sanding. One cool thing with binding is that if you've got some acetone, you can melt the binding. So this was some cream binding I'm going to be using for the Les Paul that you've seen in other videos. You let this sit for a couple of days, it'll actually melt the binding in. One of the things I did not want to do here is glue the binding in because then the glue would leak into the wood. So I'm taking my acetone and just dripping it along the edge of the binding and the guitar body. And this will then melt it sort of in place. And I won't have to use the glue. And if I'd use the glue, like I said, it'll seep in and I have to do a lot more sanding and I don't want to do that. So the acetone will hold this into place and act like a glue all to itself. Probably could have glued the outside edge because that's going to stay clear. But I did both sides with a little bit of a, I think these are three millimeter droppers and just drop it in and let it go. Let it dry for 24 hours, came back with the large Stumac scraper, which I think these larger scrapers are my favorite tool from them. I use these all the time. It's one of my go-to tools for a lot of different things now. So we'll scrape each side. I only had a little bit of a lip protruding out, and this was pretty quick work. I've got the Les Paul I'm working on, and that is a huge giant pain thick binding, scraping it. This just had a little bit. So we'll scrape it off, scrape the top, get a chisel to cut the top so it's perfect. And then this chisel's too thick, so we'll grab a smaller chisel and cut it where the humbucker is. Don't wanna loosen it up too much. Make sure it's a clean cut. I'll finish scraping the bottom side here. Somewhere in my process, I should have sanded this top down with 320, 600, and gotten it cleaned up before I got to the taping piece, which is up next. I got this all scraped, which scratched the wood in a couple spots. Definitely would have recommended here for me to actually sand this down. We're gonna use some fine line tape and tape off the inside here run this through, and then come back with some blue tape and seal off the rest of the body. We're gonna put three coats of Troil on here. We're gonna seal this up. I wanted to use Troil to 
yellow up the quilted maple. A little bit of yellow helps a ton. And then the backside here, this torrified basswood really looks cool with a couple coats of troy oil. The one thing that really surprised me is how much oil this sucker soaked up. Three coats in and it's still sucking up oil. So torrified wood really is thirsty, which I wasn't expecting to that degree. So I thought I would do one coat, which then became two coats. At the third coat, it still was turning sort of a, a white chalky on the end grain. And then I actually ended up sealing a little bit of it more with some sanding sealer. Um, was really surprised by how much it would soak it up. So you can see the rear control cavity that I did. Wiping that true oil everywhere. Really cool looking guitar body at this point. That torrified basswood is really neat. And then the quilted maple's looking really cool. We'll then go ahead and pull off the tape. And there's a little bit of residue on the wood. So we'll get this all pulled off. I then grab a razor blade. And I think if I had sanded this down, it would have had a little bit better results. I take the razor blade and scrape off some of the residue, which then left some scratches. And then as I apply that first coat of dye, I needed to sand it back off because I had a couple more scratches on this than I thought. A couple spots where the true oil soaked through, get it nice and clean, clean up any of the residue. Really love that color contrast. I think even if you did just the quilted maple on the top and the bottom with the binding in the middle, it really does break it up, catches your eye. Neat effect. So we'll apply some fine line tape on the outside and get ready to do some staining. And we will show you that in part two. We'll get that video up here in the next day or so. Thanks for watching guys, we'll see you in the next video.